Are you a believer in even the possibility of lightning striking twice? Uh, not, not with us playing, no. It, uh, usually things like that happen against us. Um, just can't believe it was over in two days, to be honest. You know, just we've never been in it through anything like that, even in county cricket, I think. And, uh, you know, three days off after that, we didn't know what to do with ourselves. Luckily, Channel 4 rang us up and said, could you come into Headingley? That gave us something to do. And to turn up, the grounds are empty. You know, 10 o'clock usually when we're strapping our gear on, we're done. Fletcher Field group. we're all sat in the dressing room shaking our heads and you know just unbelievable two days and then have three days off Essex was still playing came back and uh, watched Essex play you're eating bacon sandwiches with hangovers yeah the odd <laughs> hangover there yeah how did you feel out there actually in the middle when you're going through the West Indies again you weren't out there at Lords you were watching injured now actually you're part of it I just uh, didn't even look at look at the scoreboard. We were just uh, trying to get every wicket. We had plans that me and Duncan had set for every player, how we were going to bowl to him, and you're just trying to do that with every player. And then when you get the wickets, you look up and you think they're about 100 for six or seven or whatever, and they're, you know, 40 for seven or 50 for seven, whatever it was. And you don't know how you got them there, and you just hope that the ball will carry on running. Next, goodbye to Kirtley and Courtney, and hello to England. Welcome back to the Caribbean Summer with Nasser Hussein, and we've been back at the remarkable series at the West Indies just a few months ago. We've reached the final test match at the Oval. Nasser, what occasion that turned out to be? Yeah, there was so much happening. Five days, five days, the ground sold out, people locked out. Ambrose, Walsh, Atherton's 100, um, many things, you know, creating history there, winning um, a great five days. The day before the game, the West Indians were in Lambeth to support a scheme aimed at providing better cricket facilities for children in the borough. Heads is the call, heads it is. Back on centre stage, Atherton and Truscothic gave England the perfect start. 159 for the first wicket, having been put in to bat. Then the bowlers continued with the mem that they'd left behind at Leeds. White, five for 32. Cork, three for 23. England, 156 ahead on Saturday afternoon, and from that point on, the sun shone and the party began. The fourth day's play belonged almost exclusively to Michael Atherton. Run. His 15th test century was greeted with almost unparalleled enthusiasm and warmth. I think they've got to him, you know, great, great matches of getting close to him and see now someone of his experience, 100 odd test matches, looked around just to double take that people were still clapping. Ah! 
The enthusiasm and warmth continued minutes later when Atherton finally fell to Courtney Walsh and this great bowler, along with his brother-in-arms, Kirtley Ambrose, left an English playing field for the last time. Ambrose already announced his retirement from Test cricket. Walsh would later decide to soldier on, but the curtain had closed on one of the greatest double acts in the history of the game. The final day of the summer, and every vantage point was taken. Tickets free for under 16s and old age pensioners, and ten pounds. By ten o'clock in the morning, it hundreds of yards down the Harleyford Road. To ease the pressure, the hospitality boxes, unsold and empty on Mondays, were made available to the general public. Eighteen and a half thousand people, the Oval's biggest last day crowd in memory, were there to see England push for victory. With the West Indies 167 for eight and the game all but over, there were just two batsmen to come, Kirtley and Courtney. More than just a gesture of them retiring, I think it was also the way they had bowled at us in that series and the way you know, they were carrying the whole West Indies side on their shoulders. And I just think we felt we weren't going to see them in England again. We had to say something or do something to say, you know, all right, we've battled against you, Atherton's battled against you, and we've all battled, but, you know, utmost respect for what you've done, and this is your moment. Soon after, the celebrations belonged to England. You collapsed on your knees when it was all said and done. What was going through your head? Um, I don't know, to be honest. Um, it was just the fact of the build-up of pressure throughout the year and people wanting you to beat the West Indies. And, you know, just in the back of your mind, the previous series, Channel 4 kept sort of putting up the previous series, 2 all, 2 all, and we were 2-1 up. And in that afternoon, Lara and Sarwan still coming at us, still not over. And just, I wasn't going to say we had won this series until we'd got that wicket and then when you get the wicket you think finally can I believe it that that we've done this and uh, you know it's just a sort of build up of pressure and the amount you actually want to do something but you don't dare believe it until that final moment when you're looking at an umpire to see out the corner of your eye is he going to give him is it is it all over for the summer have we finally done it <laughs> We've had some good scenes at the Oval. The Oval is a place we win, so we've had some celebrations at the Oval, but this was different to win a series. And the boys realised, everyone realised the importance of it. 31 years, the Wisdom Trophy, regaining that, and the crowd, we felt the expectations of the country. And we, we were just pleased we hadn't let them down. 
and we enjoy each other's company anyway. And celebrating's easy after winning like that.